to the bottom of this one. Unspoken truths that I miss one. Tap into the minds of the people. Rather acknowledge before I dismiss one. Atheist, Muslim, Christians, Buddhist, they all got usage. All got pers- All of the lies you smother, what I'm trying to the kill you, or faith you recover. Yeah, peel off the makeup, we finna take off. Never said it be a cakewalk, meditate till we charged up. As Hugo's regardless, decalcify my penial. Breaking language barriers, we saw millennials. Plan this past and age rotations, down me we owe. So down me we know. Sometimes we can't be slow, that's why my ears open. Every drop you add could complete the ocean. Speak up, play your part too. Been vulnerable, it's so hard to reflect on all the juice like taught you. It's for you tell the truth. Hi, everybody. I'm Kimberly with Unseen Twisted Truth. We are the People's Podcast, and I got tonight on Tails On. Hey. And what's that part? OGIT Tails, man. Your very own Ari Tail Music Group artist, man. Shout out my baby White T, man. My Trench Twin, man. Shout out, going, uh, shout out, shout out, shout out, Twisted, uh, Unseen tr- Twisted Truth, man. Shout out, everybody East, man. And I hope to see y'all at my performance, you know, meet and greet, you know. When's your performance? Uh, May 19th, man. We turning up at Club 54, man. We turning that bitch up and kicking niggas out, man. <laughs> yeah. So tell everybody about you. Uh, I'm OGIT Tales. Yeah. Ray, born in Port Huron, raised on the east side of Detroit, man. Uh, my main focus right now, I really just been trying to get my my real life together as opposed to my music life. Cause my music life is pretty fantastic, you know. I get my my little hey thing right now. We trying to build a uh, company. I just started a company called KMT Exotic LLC. <clears throat> It'll be up and running. It's a dog breeding and pet pet training and transportation company. So we getting that rolling. Um, out of ADHD, though. Man, what else we got going on, man? Tell me, when did you start music? Uh, I started music when I was little. I was like 11 or 12 in my granddaddy basement, man. Rest in peace to Goat, the God, man. Rest in peace, killer, man. He, uh, he hated we was in the basement up all night making music, but he made a legend, let me tell you. <coughs> so what made you want to start music? My uncles, my uncles for real. Yeah, I just when I when I seen how it was made and I seen the process, I just fell in love, and I've been in love with music ever since. Uh, that was when I was little though. Like I fell off and I wasn't really making music seriously until I was fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. But I was I I was always fascinated with white boy rappers. That shit has always amazed me. Like damn, you can rap, you feel? Me? So I, I was listening to MGK when before he was on his punk shit, and I just started. That's where the tales came from. You see what I'm saying? I can feel that. I can feel that. So, um, I apologize. I'm trying to figure this thing out. Usually, I can make it a lot bigger. For for some reason, it's not. But anyways, it's maybe, maybe it's my screen. Huh? No, it's my end. But usually it gets a lot bigger. But anyway, so um, I ask everybody this, and I want to ask you the same thing. If there's one thing in music that you could tell someone younger than you that's trying to start, what can you do for encouragement or anything? What would you tell them? Listen to you. And always follow your, your first mind Listen. when it comes to decision-making because you're going to have a lot of people telling you to do this and telling you to do that but at the end of the day it's your decision your life your balance don't fuck up your balance listening to somebody else that's so true that's so <clears throat> true so i want people to know the real you see i know you outside of this podcast and i want people to know how big your heart is and how much you give back to the community and and everything that you've done 
for others because you're not you're not the type of artist that just focuses on you right you make sure everybody's taken care of it's a it's a gift and a curse for sure but if they're walking with you they're walking beside you you're not walking behind you and that's a good thing to have though yeah because it treats you you treat people the way you want to be treated literally yeah for real literally yeah. Sometimes it don't go like that, but you know we thug on and we get we get moving how we move, and that's why we in the position we in. Uh, and but, again, <coughs> shout out to my personal PR because goddamn she put some shit on the flow. <laughs> she put shit on the flow that I've been waiting for since we was at the bullfrog. Shout out Mo, man, big Mo showstopper. Yeah, shout out my pops too, man. That's that's really what what put me out. In the in the spotlight, it really made me want to do this for real. And, and watch a, how hard he would work for his son or any of his kids to succeed. My dad would die for it. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to me having a good a good dad and a, and good parents because I know a lot of niggas out here ain't got that man value. Yeah. What you got? Yeah, for sure. Um, Gina said, "Hey, she's the one from the Divine Order." Oh, Gina. Gina Baster, Gina Baby. That's what she just said. Hey, on there, you can see comments. If you go to where it says more, it'll say more, and it'll show you people's comments. I gotta see. Hold on. She said, "Hey." Was oh uh, no, that's Gina Adams. What's up? I don't know her. That's the What's one. Up? That's the one from Divine Order. That when you were um, we we're at the go kart on the grill, she was talking uh, to you. Yeah, that's yeah, my that's friend. Work. That's work. <laughs> my bad. My bad. But she just said, "Hey." Um. But yeah, so I want people to know that this is personal to me. This this whole interview is personal to me. And I want people to know, you know, it's not about just getting to be heard. It's about letting people to see both sides of you and getting recognized and also giving back. <clears throat> but we, ha we have to. How else are we going to get our blessings? For real. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing going on, man. We chilling. We doing this podcast, man. You better be there May 19th, too. I better see you in the Beamer truck, man. You better be supporting me like I'm supporting y'all, man. I couldn't make it last time, but I'm going to be out here this Sunday. Make <laughs> sure I make it to the go-kart track on Sunday because we barbecuing good food. Oh, yeah, and I bought a big... I bought some shit, okay? So make sure everybody there on May man, next Sunday, man. We doing it every Sunday, man. Cleaning up the go-kart track, For trying sure. to make sure getting it. Getting everything together for the kids, getting the city together, man. Trying to do one good thing at a time, man. Yeah, for sure. Because I spoke on that too last time. I was saying, you know, the youth don't have anything, and if we take take away and keep shutting down stuff for the youth, what do they got but the streets? And you, you help raise your little brothers sometimes, right? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I help. I help raise them. I, I, I wouldn't say. See, I wouldn't say help raise them because everybody had they, they mama or they daddy. You see what I'm saying? I just was, I'm the big brother. So I was always a part of everything. You see what I'm saying? So even when mom and dad couldn't convince little brother to do something, big bro could. You see what I'm right. saying? So it ain't got nothing to do with raise. I never raised. But when, when, it, when someone can look up to you, though, when someone can look up to you as a role model, you're raising them. It doesn't matter if it's someone your age. Right. It, when I say raise, I'm not saying your parents stepped away and you had to take care of them. Yeah, right. But you were able to walk in that light where they could look up to you. Right. <clears throat> what? So that, that's a good them. thing. I'll be real. <clears throat> I was the sibling that they had to learn from. I had to learn. They learned from me. All my siblings right now at their age, my sibling, my brothers is 10 years and I think my sister is about... <clears throat> About six, seven years, almost eight years, and they all doing fantastic. Both my sisters going to college. All of my brothers is doing good in school and in sports. Like, it's just amazing to me because me, I was the fuck up. And, and I don't, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm man enough to admit my mistake. I made a lot of mistakes, you see what I'm saying? But for them to see what I went through and be like, hell no, nah, I feel like I did my part a little bit. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> She said you perform at the Bullfrog. I don't know what that is. But. The Bullfrog? Yeah, I'm a showstopper. Come on, man. I Did you perform there? 
Yeah, I performed, well, I, I done had so many performances at the Bullfrog. It don't even make no sense. She says she so she said he performed at the Bullfrog, so she did see you perform at the Bullfrog, I guess. Uh, she might not. Have, she she might be saying she asked if I did. I don't know if she saw me, but I have been there multiple times, a lot of times. Yeah, I've been there when Nisha and the Shed was there. Uh, we had Band Gang come out there one time. It was uh, I had a lot of fun there. That was when I was first starting uh, learning how to work the mic and work the stage. I don't know what the bullfrog is, so I'm not. It's hip. like a, it's a bar and grill with a stage in it, just like Club Fifty Four. Okay, it's just then. A little bit more ghetto. <laughs> shout out, shout out the bullfrog because it's a safe environment if you want to feel me. Okay, shout man. bullfrog to my people. <clears throat> but anyway, so um. Yeah, so what we got coming up, we got a many, 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 many different things coming up together. Um, we are going, we are now Everyone Eats. So anytime we do any fundraiser event where we're giving back to the community, that's Everyone Eats. So we had that fundraiser um, that we're putting on June 11th, actually. It's not even a fundraiser, it is a charity concert. We're going to put on a charity concert and. Um, give away food, bathhouses, and clothes, haircuts, everything. It, just come on out, enjoy, enjoy life for free, and um, network, and just meet people, and just enjoy life. I think it's important that people should be able to eat and take showers. I don't think taking a shower should be a privilege. No, at all. Mm -mm. And I don't, I don't think eating should be a privilege. I think people should be able to eat every single day and shower and get a haircut, love I themselves. Believe, I do believe motherfuckers do need to work for what they get, but I do understand that sometimes it's hard to do so, especially starving, house. You know and, what I'm saying? and I'm not saying just go take advantage of people and get shit for free. That's not what right. I'm saying by any means. But you shouldn't. And it shouldn't be so hard to get resources that God gave us. Like everything in this world was given to us by God for us to utilize. We shouldn't have to struggle so hard to get fruit when fruit is given to the land. For real. God gave us fruit. <coughs> but we, we can't even get fruit for free. Yeah, no, fruit has gotten high too. In, in water, we got to pay for water. We got to pay for air. We got to pay for soil. We shouldn't have to pay for stuff that God gave us. For real. So. We still paying for weeds. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So what I'm trying to say to you though. If people want to take advantage of a day that someone is going to give them a place to take a shower, a haircut and all that stuff. Just so they can feel good about life. It might be that that saves somebody. It might be that <clears throat> moment that people needed to get a new job or feel good about life. Just know you're not alone. We all been through it. I've slept in my car before. I've been homeless. Don't just we're not alone. We're not alone. So whatever you're growing through at the moment, we've all done it. Yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. We've all done it. Sometimes we have to bump our heads a few times to get something through, but um, we've all done it. Stumble, but it's about with those hands that are reaching out to help you get up. Them are the ones that matter. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Shout out my whole family, too. For real. You know, your whole family rocks, man. Like, I knew your dad from middle school on. Like, your dad and I, we grew up knowing each other and stuff like that. And uh, you got a great family. You really lucked out when it comes to family. You have an amazing support system with your family. I ain't gonna lie. It was a lot of before. It was a lot of um, before. before. There was a lot of bullshit going on. You know what I'm saying? Before it was that tight. Now we that tight for real. Like the whole family. Yeah. Uh, you know how that shit go. People separate. People move on. People have different experiences in their life. But one thing about my family, they definitely use the village to raise the kids. No cap. Now you pulled out your other phone, made me want to pull my other phone. Only because the time limit's about to go up on this one real quick, and I don't know what's going on. I don't have nothing saved on this, so it says <laughs> your time your time is almost up um, to to upgrade for more live broadcast time. But this is for um, Sprinker, and remember, I, we just paid for it. 